Hello, hello! So, today we're going to continue looking at the wheels and how your suspension affects how the tyres work. Today we're going to be looking at a setting called the camber. So, camber controls the angle at which the tyre leans as it sat on the road. For example, a car with a neutral camber setting will be sat perfectly vertical on the road. If the camber is changed so that the top of the tyre is leaning away from the car, or leaning out, this is called positive camber and is represented with a positive value. If the tyre is leaning towards the centre of the car, or leaning in, this is negative camber. So why would you want to change the camber in a race car? Well first, let's look at the stresses that a tyre goes through when a car is turning a corner. Now let's imagine that we're sat at the front of the car and we're looking backwards at this tyre. And for this example, let's imagine that the car is turning to the left, so in this direction. So as the car approaches and brakes for the corner, the tyre and the contact patch are pressed nice and flat against the road. However, as the car enters the turn, it will begin to roll. Now if you imagine the car is turning left, all of the weight will be put onto the right side of the car. This causes the car's body to roll. Now as it rolls, it will push the tyre over like this. Now look at how much of the tyre is now touching the road. You can see that the contact patch is much smaller, which means that there's now less grip when the car is turning. So let's look at that same example again, however let's start with some negative camber on the tyre. So in a straight line, the tyre will be resting mainly on its inside edge. Now as it enters the turn, the car will roll the same as before, but if we roll the tyre over as well, you can see that it now sits flat against the road, which offers much more grip in the corner. And that's the primary benefit of negative camber, and that's why it's used often in racing. Negative camber improves the performance of a car in a turn. Another benefit is that in a straight line, because it's resting on only part of the tyre, that means the contact patch is smaller, which allows for better acceleration and better speed. Now the downsides of having negative camber. With a smaller contact patch, that means that there's less grip available when braking. However, if you can find the right camber value, as the car brakes, it will squash the tyre down into the road enough so that the whole width is in contact with the road, which offers better braking performance. The other disadvantage is that the tyre will be constantly resting on its inside edge, so it will have uneven wear. By that, I mean that the inside edge of the tyre will wear out quicker than the rest of the tyre, which could make the car's handling tricky or unpredictable. Also, because it's the only part of the tyre which touches the road, the inside edge will run at a higher temperature, which will also increase how quickly it wears out. Therefore, it is advised to run a negative camber on twisty tracks with a lot of turns, where the car and the tyre will be rolled over a lot, so that the full surface of the tyre is in use more often. Now, with regards to positive camber, I struggle to find any examples of when this would be used in a race car, other than for drifting competitions where drivers are deliberately sliding their cars. Road cars and utility vehicles, such as tractors, will sometimes have a little bit of positive camber set up because it reduces the amount of effort it takes to steer and turn the wheel. Also, most roads are not perfectly flat. They have a gentle arch to allow water to run off to the sides, so positive camber on a car will help the tyres with this shape of the road. So hopefully that opens your eyes to the world of camber. In my next video, we're going to start moving away from the tyres and look at the suspension components which connect the wheel to the chassis or the car's body. So I hope to see you there. Many thanks for watching and I'll catch you later. Now listen up guys, driving fast in real life is dangerous and most likely illegal where you are. So save it for a safe and controlled environment and don't be doing it on the streets, okay? Stay safe out there.